Hello Mayhem Makers, I'm Mindy with Quilting Mayhem and we are working on cream and sugar. Uh, we're up to the setting block, so Starshine setting number one uh, is what I'm going to talk about today. So you have all kinds of blocks, you should have two of each. I only did one because I've already done the quilt um, and so this is just to show you how it's going. But So separate them into two piles, so you have two matching piles of your blocks. Uh, one through five and then what will happen is you're going to start making pieces that are going to be added around it okay so we're kind of adding to these blocks giving them a little extra zing to them before they go into the quilt so this is kind of a fun part to do super easy so you'll knock this out have it done in no time you're going to cut all your fabrics so you'll have some bigger background triangles and squares and then you're going to have two different colors of these smaller triangles so you're going to make two different sets because they're going to face opposite directions up the triangle when you go to put them together into this unit so we need to you know have the lighter color here and a darker color here so you can separate these into two different sets make sure you lay them out correctly so when you go to do it you want to make sure essentially these I have the colors correctly for you you know 90 degree angle going up that way and then you lay them right sides together so essentially what will happen is you're going to have two sets where you're going to sew from this top to this bottom and just make sure all your sides are lined up evenly with the light color on top and you're going to do uh, two sets of those where the dark color is going to be on top. All right, pretty simple. And you're just gonna go top to bottom, all right? Quarter inch seam, maybe a little bit scant, give you enough room so they all measure up correctly in the end. So I'll sew those up. Now because we're working with a lot of bias, which means uh, on the 45 angle, it gives a lot more stretch. So definitely recommend using starch for this part if you have not been using it already. Because um, it does stretch very easily. And that starch will kind of keep it a little crisper, not as stretchy. But you're essentially going to end up once again, if I can get my colors going correctly, two units like this, and I will clip off these little dog ears. But so half are gonna look like this, half are gonna look like that. All right. You'll press those so they're all pretty. And then you're going to take your bigger triangle, and we're going to make sure if you watched a video for block five, we're gonna make sure that we lay things out before we sew them. All right. So we're gonna make sure. The lighter triangles are towards the center of this triangle and the darker colors are out to this point. Now my tip for this, A, if you're nervous about lining them up and getting them sewn correctly, do a little bit longer stitch so if you have to rip that stitch out, it's not as painful because you can always back, go back over and stitch it again with a regular stitch. So if you're a little worried about this part because you're working with all these angles, trying to make everything work, just do a bigger stitch. Do like a four instead of a two and a half and make sure it looks all nice and correct and then you can just go back and stitch it again with your regular two and a half now my trick I lined up this top point and it's going to have this little dog ear at the end that's how I made sure it all lined up nice and pretty so you have your big triangle you have this unit line up this corner and it's going to have a little bit excess about a quarter inch is what it should have at the end and then just take it to the machine and sew a quarter inch now because you can't put the other side on until that side's pressed we're going to go to the iron over here and just do a little starch Sorry, I'm trimming all kinds of threads, I'm trying to do all kinds of things at once. 
Okay, so number one, right? So we're gonna iron a little bit of starch. Press. Uh, if you're pressing one direction, you'll probably press outward since the center is lighter. Okay, so you're gonna have this little bit that sticks out and that's okay, because you're gonna trim that later. So then for this guy, we're essentially gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna lay it and I'm gonna match these top corners. So in the end, you're going to have kind of a, a crisscross of dog ears and that's what you want. All right, so we're just gonna line it up. We're gonna go sew it. It is a little stretchy, so don't pull necessarily on the top or bottom piece because it will just distort it. So don't be aggressive in, in handling that piece. So like here, I'll show you. So over here, you don't need to be like pulling because look how much that guy stretches. That's just crazy. We don't need that much. So we're just gonna lay it and just hold it so it stays straight, but not actually pull on it. Okay, we're gonna cut it and press it. And that's what's going to end up looking like this, okay? Ta-da! Alright, starch, press. So you're just going to make a bunch of units that look like that. And then half of them are going to get uh, squares attached to either end and half are just going to stay like this. Okay, so you're going to make this unit first and then split them in half and so half, a stack of these will be set to the side and then the other stack you're going to add these squares. So I need to do that to at least one of these. Oh, I didn't press my other, I was like, I'm missing piece. I still have triangles I need to press. Oh. I need to learn to caffeinate better before I try to do videos for you guys. All right. So, let's get those guys pressed. So they can sit down for you while I show you. So you're just going to have one of these, two of those. We're just going to attach them to the ends. So just line up those corners and then go to the machine. Put them nice and even. Now if you're new, please pin beginning and end. They don't warp and do weird things, but if you've been doing this a while, you should not have a problem just lining them up, going to your machine, and just making sure the beginning corner is all lined up nice and straight, and the ending corner is all nice and straight. Now, because you're working with bias, it may not necessarily be that way. So some of this, what you end up doing is kind of like if this bottom one is sticking out a little further, make sure you make it match, okay? The key is that these corners need to match and then you can either give it a little tug or just make sure you hold on to it so that everything in between cooperates with each other because you don't want that excess in the end because that's what's going to make the rest of your quilt start to be off. So I'm just kind of manipulating the fabric. I'm just giving it a little tug to make it straight. And then obviously moving my finger before we get to the end. So we don't want needles in our fingers. <laughs> you know, little disclaimers like that. Um, so that's kind of how you do these units because you do want to make sure 
your beginning and ending are the same. Otherwise you do, you get dips and waffles and little waves and nobody likes those. Let me try it again. So, do this part. And it really doesn't matter which side I spray that starch, I'm just getting it into that seam. I could have flipped it around. It doesn't matter. So then what will end up happening is, um, A, I need to finish making that piece, but you'll end up with your block. And so when you have two of these, once I finish the other side, you're going to sew one to one side of your block and one to the other side of your block. And then you'll be able to put these top units on and you're gonna end up with really big blocks. So it's kind of a cool way to take uh, a fun smaller block and turn it into a big block and add a little extra uh, flair to it. Okay, so I think you'll get the gist of it. I'll post a picture uh, in the group for you guys of what the finished block looks like. Um, construction wise, I think you guys got it. So I won't hold you up here. Uh, hopefully that got you enough information. But of course, as always, if it didn't, reach out to me, message me on Facebook, the shop, my email, any of those things, and I'll gladly help you uh, fix any issues you might be having. And so, especially with this one where it's got that bias, that stretch with it, you may be struggling a little harder, so do not be afraid. Just let me know, we'll help you out. Okay guys, hope you're having fun with these blocks. We'll see you soon, keep on stitching.